Hello! In this video, I'm going to take you through how to make the Muskoka Cottage Sock Monkey inspired pom-pom beanie, or toque as we call them in Canada, on my Addy 46 pin circular knitting machine. This is the perfect knit item to sell or give as a gift this Christmas or holiday season. For the fall or winter, Today I'm using Diamond Yarn Baby Alpaca in cream and red, as well as Patton's Wool Classic Wool. Um, to give it that sock look, I'll have my handy dandy scissors, a F hook, and a couple darning needles. Let's get started. First, we'll cast on to our Addy 46 pin machine by threading the first black hook and weaving front and back every subsequent hook from right to left until we finish one full rotation. There we go and when we reach the other side we'll load the yarn guide door and continue cranking four to six rows of waist yarn. Making sure along the way that we don't skip any stitches and I'll meet you at the end of the four rows. Now sometimes I'll add a few extra waist yarn rows if I really want the starting fabric to be really stable for my project. So for this one I went actually up to eight rows and now we're on eight so I'm gonna cut the yarn and load in our, our project yarn which is the gray and white sock yarn and I'm gonna load two plies of these into the machine so I'll lay it down next to it load it into the yarn guide and start cranking we're going to do 35 rows in the gray and white yarn I like to be sure to tie my waist yarn just a gentle tie not a full knot just so it doesn't fall apart when I start seaming the edges later. Now we're approaching our 35th row so once we get there I'm going to cut the yarn and place the cream yarn in next. So I'll lay the grain white yarn in the center and then grab my cream baby alpaca and lay it right next to the gray and white yarn close the yarn feeder door we'll reset our counter and then crank our cream yarn for eight rows and eight now we're going to do four rows of red so just like the previous color change we're going to cut the yarn lay it down place our red yarn beside it and then keep going for four rows and four and now we'll take our cream yarn again so cut the red lay our cream yarn beside it close the door and we're going to knit 12 rows so this is the bottom brim of the beanie now which means that six rows will show on one side and six rows will show on the other side of the cream then we're going to repeat the row of the red after these 12 rows of cream so just stick with me folks and you'll see that we're going to do the 12 right now Now would be an excellent time to knot our stitches where we changed our colors together. So I'm going to knot the red and white rows together. These are meant to stay together for the life of the hat. So you want to make sure it's nice and snug, but make sure you don't pull too tight so it puckers your stitch. Make it consistent with the rest of the stitches. We go now make sure they're out of the way and we keep going back to our 12 rows of cream now we're done our 12th row I'm gonna cut the cream yarn lay down our red yarn and knit four rows of red and four 
Now we'll switch back to our cream yarn. And we'll be knitting eight rows of cream. Tying up our color changes as we go. Now at the end of this eighth row of cream, we're going to bring back the gray and white yarn. And we're gonna knit 35 rows of gray and white. I'm at 31 rows so I'm almost at 35 and soon I'll be adding on my waist yarn. If you'll notice in the center I roll up the piece so that it doesn't get in the way. So I just kind of like fold it and roll it so that it doesn't hit the bottom and drag. It's a little bit tidier that way. Now at my 35th row I'm going to cut the gray and white yarn and put waste yarn on again so I can stabilize the fabric when I'm seaming the seams together. Now you can do four to eight rows of waste yarn and then tie it with just a nice gentle tie to the main project yarn and then cast off just by continuing to crank it without feeding in any more yarn into the machine. And now we'll move away our little laddie. Don't mind the masking tape. That's what I use to keep it stable if I can't mount it onto the table. And now we have both sides of the top and the bottom of our Muskoka Sock Monkey inspired beanie. Now I'll look for the two ends where I finished and started the rows to make sure that the rows all line up. And I'm going to fold it pulling the bottom half into the top half with the right side facing out and matching up the starting and the end rows with each other. And as you can see, it's reversible on both sides. I'm gonna even it out and match up the ends and get ready to seam these ends together. So grab your crochet hook. I usually like using a F or a G hook just so I can get into the stitches. And seam together each side's stitches into the opposite side, making sure not to miss any so that the column of knit doesn't unravel. I'm going to zoom right in to show you which stitch to pick up. If you see the blue colored waist yarn, look for the one gray yarn above it of the project yarn. That is the loop that you pick up. Same thing with the purple yarn. If you see the one gray line below it that pops out of the waist yarn, that is the loop that you pick up. Now keep working this way and I'll meet you on the other side. I've already pulled and unraveled the blue yarn and I'm just pulling off the last end into the seam for the other side and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unravel the other waist yarn and this side is a little bit tougher to unravel because you've got this line of yarn that catches all of the stitches so to deal with this end you just simply pull out the top string of yarn so that all of the stitches are freed to easily unravel. And once you do this top line of yarn, you will easily be able to pull out the rest of the yarn. So go ahead and pull the rest of the waist yarn off and then we will sew together the top. Now we have a beautiful seam and we're gonna look at it from top down and hold it in four equal parts to make it across. Then we're going to tack the inside corners of the cross so it stays that way. Then we're gonna seam in the edges.
Now close up all the edges into the center. Looks like I should have left a longer tail. I'm going to go get more yarn. There, I got more yarn and I've tacked it in. Now I'm going to side the, sew the two opposite sides together so they're nice and even. And then once those two sides are sewn together, then I'm going to sew up the other two sides. Now that I've got two opposite sides sewed together, I'll start on one of the other sides and I'll secure it to the center of the hat. Then I'll work my needle to the other side so I can pick up the other loose top part of the top and secure it to the center. Then I work my way top down of the seam so that all four sides are secure all the way down. Then I weave in my ends to secure it and I'll hide the yarn before cutting it. And as you can see, voila! A four point top. All that's left to do is detach the yarn and add a schnazzy pom pom. Now with my pom-poms, I always like to floof it up before attaching it to the hat so all the hairs are nice and free. Ta-da!